Just play. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. <clears throat> Hello, welcome back. Thank you everyone for joining. Uh, we are continuing further our adventure for role player adventures. Uh, we are now on adventure six, which is the Bog Loop Demon. Oh, look at that. That's still by James Ryan. So it's still a continuing story by him. Uh, we still have our own contract, Ivory. And we have everything. As you can see from here, from our last play, we were able to upgrade our play limit and our combat dice limit by about combat dice limit by two, as, as well as the play limit by two. And our XP is now, I am sorry, our HP is now up to 26. Our titles are like going, are like getting thicker now. So uh, we have a lot of things to to sort through a little bit later. Yeah, maybe I should just put this here in the side as, as we did before. It's something to easily to um, browse through, right? Something as of like that. I, I don't think we will need most of these things. It's usually just like the, the last few things, right? You do get to reference. So far, everything is going. Uh, we have uh, been going through the Dragos favor more in line, not through the uh, King's one, uh, King's favor, because I don't know from 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 everything that uh, we see, right? From what we're reading, is that there was like the King is like hiding something, and uh, even the, the fact that he just ran away. I think it might be even that the real uh, the real enemy is the uh is that visible that should work even though it's fine or the actual starlet's door because they're the one who's like trying to haunt all of these um these little things uh the, the one that have, like those artifacts and then just setting off all bombs and swords, right? So let's get through it. Uh, those are all our titles ready. And continue on to our adventure six, the Bog Root Demon. Uh, okay, ABC. Oh, sorry, forgot the XP on ABC. A, B. C, as well as our player. If you have the title Infected, which we do, Reveal Discovery 101. I think it's the same one where we, our skill checks are like extra. So we still have the Shadow Boom, and we have it active here. And then anything else new? One, two tokens. Uh, and then that's it. Okay, great. Let's continue this. When the rift opened over Sabic Palace, King Tyron leapt into another plane, and you were arrested for his murder. You've managed to break out of Kulbak prison, but, world but word will spread quickly that a Kingslayer is on the loose. Construct guards are no doubt already on your trail. And last you heard, General Grick marched your old regiment in this direction. Your path brings you to a wide, marshy delta. A gigantic mangrove tree breaks the otherwise flat horizon. Its massive roots embrace several small islands known as Bog Root Swamp, home of the Frogkin. So we place the marker at location A, and we just go quickly on to read entry A. Scary demon. Sand Hill Village. So, like the XP as before. You arrive at small frogkin village, and the residents swarm around you. They appear desperate for your help. An elder who introduces introduces herself as Mugbok 
tells you that the cultist came to Bogroot and imprisoned an infernal creature within the giant mangrove tree. Now, a phantom of this creature torments everyone who travels the swamp root paths. You come late, says Mugbook. The rest of the King's Guard is already, is already hopelessly lost in the swamp. We are afraid to venture beyond our shores. You must help us purify the tree, brave the swamp, and bring us back whatever you find. It can make a cleansing potion with the right ingredients. Mugbook walks you on the shore, which is crawling with starfish. She picks one up. She picks one out and hands it to you. For luck, she says. We'll discover card 68. Okay. So it's it's weird that it means that some of the King's Guard is already here. So it is the starfish. Small little starfish. Then we can then use an item. I don't think we there's much use for the item. Let's see. Maybe it just provides a description, right? So A68. Mugbook looks at you skeptically. If I could fix our problems with a small with a starfish, we wouldn't have any problems at all. She makes a sweeping gesture across the shore, which is crawling with the creatures. <laughs> uh I guess there's only one way. We just continue true. And what we got is A2. So now it, we are on 6, 2, right? Oh, sorry, wrong side. Lip this. Uh, Adventure 6. There we go. The bog root region. Most likely there will be add, add something in here or something in the middle, right? Bog root demon, six two. If you have the keyword evade, which we do not, as you make your way across the root path, a group of construct guards around you. Weapons drawn, one construct steps forward and pulls a wanted poster from her bag. She consults the poster and looks you over. Confirm, she says. Target reacquired. Prepare for transport back to callback. The other constructs approach with. Mm, with manacles and chains. So we can just make a run for it or we can convince them that uh constitution and charisma. The other one is dexterity and charisma. I think we're we're more likely to convince them, right? Hey, we're part of construct, so maybe we just change our face or something like that. So we convince them that they are uh, mistaken for someone else. So we go to 630. Which in this case, you begin your speech, assuring your constructs that they have somehow mistaken you for a dangerous convict, but they have their orders. We do a speechcraft of three. Oh my god, that looks awfully high. Speechcraft of three. Okay. So doing that. So we we need uh purple. That's a purple, right? Yes, because char charisma. Yeah. I think I need to put a marker, so I don't. So I remember what I actually am right reading because sometimes I do forget. So this is the one we're at. We're at right now. So we need three purple, three green, and a blue and white. So we will have eight dice for this. Eight dice. Okay. Uh, we have all our things right now. We can get a couple if we wanted to. Spend three purple and maybe we just get two purple and two green, right? So we get two purple, two green. Let's put that in our fatigue. Two purple. Two green. Where's the other green? There we go. And then we get five more because eight plus our shadow boon. So here we go. First kill. 
Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's it. We get another purple, two reds. So we get at least a white and uh blue. So as long as we get that, that's the stick. We are okay. Okay, so let's try to group them up a bit. Two and four is red. Our purple is one, two, and six. White is three. Blue is black. The green are six, two. Okay, first look, we can place our two here. Six and one is the same thing, so that's that doesn't work there. Uh, we can put our green here too. And there is no other six for the blue and black and white. Okay. So I guess we want is to change the three white probably. Three white to a purple. We can decrease, uh, at least uh, let's try to prioritize first, like the ones that are free. So we can use a, we can use our tome, ancient tome. That's one play. I think I need to do something like this as well, right? Like uh, some sort of token that says like, hey, I did this already. One card play, it's fine. Let's do the one card play and change the tome of six into a five. Okay. And then we can actually use our holy black, increase a black, purple die by one or two. So that's another second card. So we can change this into a three. So those are done. And then, We can change any red die, right, into a green. So that's three cards now. So we just need the six, right? So we need the six. Change, okay, maybe we can do this. This is four, for a fourth card. Change the green to a white. And lastly, we can we want it for the white. We want it for the white. You can change any three or four into any color. That's a one time use. We can flip a one and four. Keep that, unless we actually do want to use, uh, we have an extra, right? We can change a three, a one, that's a one. Mm, how do I make a three? Okay, so we can change anything to green and we can uptick it if you want to. Can we uptake the white? Can we uptake the white? I think we can, and then just use this. Where is that? Where is my white manipulation? There we go. So how many is that? This is four, five, six. Oh, we have one more. Okay, so we can uptake the white to in four. And we will be spending, basically spending this as a one-time use. Change it into a green. So putting that there. And voila. Our dice limit plus two because of this. And I think we will use, uh, where's that? 
since we have one more. This is one, two, three, four, five, six. We would want to use this one. Each player adds three stamina to their fatigue box. Oh, from the fatigue box and the supply. So from here to here, and then gain one XP. Mm, no, I think we just want to use the other one. This one. Add one stamina to one of your attribute rows from the supply, usually ignoring the limit. So we're putting one here. And now it's six. And that's it. We completed that. So all, all the discards go back to our hand. And we just continue to 643. And this is all cleared. Each craft is closed. Go to 643. What do we get? You manage to confuse the constructs until they agree to let you go. Our apologies to the sense they say to you. Please enjoy the rest of your day. Your skill with words has freed you this time, but you suspect that the constructs will not give up their search, and you still match the description of their query. If you are not careful, you are likely to end up ensnared in their trap again. Record the keyword evade. So it's a temporary one. Maybe we should have just I think it's the same thing, right? If you, you do run, you still get the evade. Remove this and any other encounter tokens remaining on the adventure map and place them face down into your token pool. Shuffle the tokens and and the starting shuffle the tokens and start starting near location A and proceed proceeding clockwise around the map. Fill each available encounter space with an encounter token from the pool. Huh? Remove these and other encounter tokens remaining on the adventure map and place them face down into your token pool. Remove this and the other one. Okay. Shuffle the tokens and starting near the location A, proceeding clockwise around map. Fill each available encounter tokens with encounter token from the pool again. That means we'll have to face them again. So we just evaded them once. So the question is do we go to the mangrove now? Or we go to the ancient observatory. Let's go to the mangrove first because it's on the way here. We don't have to encounter it. So we go to B. Let's go. What do we get? The giant mangrove. Lots of keywords here, but nothing yet. So just continue, get the XP. And you stand at the foot of the giant mangrove, which towers silently over you. Its many leaves rustle in the wind high above, while you remain stuck in the oppressive swamp below. The trunk of the mangrove is white as a small village, but someone has tied to a purple silk ribbon inscribed with silver runes around it. The frogkin villagers were awfully upset about this tree and said that some of the evil force had taken possession of it. But you don't see any signs of devilry. Perhaps the phantom lurks somewhere on the other side. We can walk around the base of the tree and look for anything out of place. Or we examine the silk ribbon more closely. I think we do, right? We examine the silk ribbon more closely. We go to B3. So here, where we are, you look over the runes on the ribbon studying them carefully, attempting to discern their meaning. If your starlet's favor is three or higher, which it is, each player adds one stamina to any of their attributes from the supply, ignoring any limits. Maybe we, what do we need? Um, int and wisdom. Maybe we just put one in wisdom. Skill check, interpretation of two. Introspection, interpretation. So we want to interpret it, what's going on. And it's two, you get a dice limit of two or white, two blue. Uh, I think we, you can just put one white and one blue for the moment, right? So it's now at six. 
one white, one blue. And we get what? One, four more. Oh, no, no, five more. Dice limit of six, right? Yes. Oh, so you got a blue, you got a black, you just need a purple, and a white. Maybe one, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, okay. And seven. Okay, we don't have a purple. We do have a white, so that's okay. And we have multiple blues. Be lucky. Interpretation. Let's interpret this properly. Okay, we got a one. We got a two. We got three. 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 And then six, six. Okay, two goes here. Three green or white. This is a white. That goes there. And then a four. Four blue and four white. Okay, so what do we get? Uh, this is the three blue, works here. So we just need a four blue and four white. So how do we get that there? We can change any two to any four or six. Okay, that's an option. So if we uptick this and then we can change it to a four, right? Yes, but then the problem is the uptick is a one time use. We have uptick of blue one time and change engine one, flip it, it'll be a six. We don't want it. Can we flip a three? You can flip a green, uh, wait a minute, three or five. I think we can flip a green because this will be one of our thing and we just flip the green for a one-time use. We don't want to use the one time yet. This might be an option, like I said, uh, but flip the green, where is this? Flip the blue, flip the white. Maybe we should be grouping this up. Flip the blue again. Reroll, reroll. Flip. Let's group all our flips. There we go. So the runic helmet. So if we do have a runic, we can use the other runic in one go. We can we can do that, which we can't. We can do the black, which we don't want to do. And that's it. Okay, so we flip the green. So first part, which will be a four. Then we use the green, change it to a blue. This is considered a blue now. <laughs> Lastly, is we change the one, no, no, it's a flip. All right, this one, use examine to change it into a three. Right, and then we use knowledge to flip it into a four. And lastly is we have to change it to color. Can change the color twice. Keep that. So change it to a white in one go. So we use stead fast. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So this is now a white. Then we use our vibrant, a, a dice of your class. Oh, to your dice bolts. To your dice bolts. Sorry, not that one. We want the other one. Um, where is it? I think I already used it though. I did not add it. 
uh, this one. Oh, sure. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a free use. Add one stat map to your attribute row from the supply, ignoring the usual limit. So we're going to do that and add something in Charisma this time. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Can we use another one that does something like that? Do you think we'll be resting? We can rest if we want to. Because we might encounter them again there. If so, let's use Cathandor's Horn. Each player adds three stamina to their fatigue. Box from the supply, gain one XP. So we put one, two, three. So this is now five. We're now at nine. And we gain one XP because of that. Hackle goes back. These all goes back to my hand. Like nothing happened. And we get two XP again. Goes back. Okay, so what happened is we you are able to read the runes, which is a B6. You recall the remaining meaning of the runes and decipher and decipher them. This is an ancient holding spell that binds one physical form to another and is marked with the eye of the starlit door. A deep voice speaks from the air above you. Well deciphered. Not many of the frog people are able to read as well as you. You look upward and see a seven foot tall horned shadow smiling down at you. I'm impressed. The shadow waves its hand at you and, fe and you feel suddenly more powerful. Each player adds one stamina to any of your attribute rows, ignoring the usual limit. Okay, I think we put that to for maybe this time on Charisma. Then continue to be eight. Occur. The shadow settles on the ground before you. I am Elsifor, he says. At your service, I'm afraid I'm being bound to this tree by some horrible spell. I can't go anywhere. The tree doesn't go, and so I've been passing the time by getting to know the locals. Anything you can do to liberate me would be appreciated. Actually, there is another small matter you might help me with. I'm having some trouble with a meddlesome woman at my new temple. The shadow sinks into the mangrove roots and is gone. Reveal discovery five and place one XP on it. Frogkin Temple. And we place it on two. Here. Okay, it's the bottom. So it just sinks there. Let's put one XP there. And then we can then rest. Do you want to rest or they just go to the Frog King Temple immediately? Uh, we have nine to work with. So that means we still have a lot of like 15 or so to go. I think that's, I think we're still good. So let's go to the Frog King Temple and see what we get. That is a D. We're looking for D. Sorry, dropped my whiteboard. Okay, so we get the XP. Let's group that into five. So we know how many we have. Giant roots embrace the simple form of a stone temple. As you approach, you hear the sound of a hammer at work. You enter passing through a low archway and see a robe priest atop the statue of the frog, frog king god. Burgla, chipping away at the idol's face. A faithful devotee stands at the foot of the idol, begging her priest to put down his chisel. Elsifor appears in the air next to you. I know what you're thinking, and yes, it is odd behavior for a priest. I made him a deal. He could destroy the temple, or I could tell his little secret to everyone. It seems he'd rather keep his silence than his fate. The woman asks for your aid. She feels the priest can still be helped but she cannot pull him down on her own. Elsifor's voice whispers in your ear, don't listen to this pest. Toss her into the swamp. Well, you're a shadow demon, so... We can try to stop the 
priest or push the frog king woman into the water. I think we try to stop the priest, right? So we go to D2. After agreeing to help the woman, you work with her to pull the priest down from the idol. He desperately attempts to scramble back up, but the woman holds tight to his rope belt. The priest turns to fight. As if her voice whispers in your ear, what are you doing? Leave the poor woman, leave the poor man to his misery, he says. Combat, crazed frogkin. Well, I didn't want to have combat at this time, so let's do 12. And we do get the crazed tag. Which on this case, Raise tag. Ooh, we got it. There we go. So we have the frogkin. Look at that art. That's actually a nice art. And then the craze tag, it says. To play a weapon card, you must move one stamina from your active retros to your fatigue box. Okay, so any attribute, right? Doesn't say the specific one. Like, for example, it's a black. Let's... Okay, let's put our marker in. First round. We need three greens and three blue and purple. Blue purple. Okay, leading purple. Uh get to convert green wise, I think. So I think we need to buy green, so we use one. Right. And then we have a combat dice limit of eight. So we can draw a lot, which is good. Uh do we, do we want to add the blue just in case? Let's add one blue. So that one is down. And then we get what? Six. One, two. Three, four. Come on, give me some greens, man. Five, six. Yes, you got please get one green. This is now our eight. This is our combat dice limit. Let's do it here. So we got one green. And that's it. We only have one green. We got five, five, five with lots of fives. One, two. Six. The blue is a five. If we flip that, it does nothing. So we can uptick the two to a green. So if you use this, this can be a three. And then we can change that to any color. What's that? Oh, wait, wait, wait. We don't need to up. Or is that one? Sorry, forgot it. Okay. You can change any green to any color. So that we need to change it to green, right? That means you have to use this. And the other one. So if you do that, so that's one, two, and then change to this. So that's three cards for one option. Maybe. Okay, let's do that just in case. So we're playing a, we haven't played a weapon yet. Oh, we're playing a weapon. To play a weapon, you must put one thing in your attribute row to here. Sure. I think we'll be resting after this. And then 
you can flip the purple. Uh, where's my purple flip? Purple flip. There we go. We can use our skill purple flip. So this will be A2. And then use the unholy flail. So we use another weapon. So that means we will probably removing one. Let's remove dex. We increase this to three. Goes there. That's five cards now. And then can we do anything with the green now? Well, we can use another weapon there. We can use it twice, two weapons, and then that's another two skill. Oh, if you flip it, if you flip green, oh, where's that? Where's my green flipper? There we go. If you flip green, no, it's reroll. Yes, so we, we use. Flip green would be a two, and then we just use the one aptic rather than two. All right, we can use the tome to flip this to three, and we use one more strength because of that. And it's now matched in one turn. So now we just use this for spent, the other goes back to my hand. So we get one XP, one gold. And everything goes back. It says here, victory. You bring him to his senses. That's good for you, little froggy. Number 12. You go to d4. You best the frog and prince in battle, and he finally gives in. As his hammer and chisel clatter to the floor, the faithful frog and woman takes his hand and leads him away. As they go, you overhear her tell him, you'll need to let truth come out. When they are gone, Elsie 4 appears at her side. Well, that was a horrible display, he says. I expect better from you in the future. So the field title card 48. Well, Elsie 4, you're a demon, so what do, what, what do you think I should be doing, right? It says here, ooh, we got a new one. It says, Triumph the Faithful. On a humble frog in temple, you, you met a piece crafted by the demon Elsie 4. Faithful frog and woman rescued him, and Elsifar was upset with you. Okay. And then continue to D8. I'll be honest, says Elsifar. I'm still getting to know you, and I don't know if I can trust you yet. I took a peek at your past and saw that you're a member of the King's Guard. Wrongfully imprisoned and escaped from Kolbak. All this feels very promising, but what I need to know is how you respond to your fellow soldiers. Reveal discovery card 1234. What the heck is he using? Is it like trying to like give me all stuff 12 and 34? Right? Giving me some tests, giving me some tests. And place one XP on each. 34 is a abandoned market. It's supposed to be an I here. Slowly, slowly opening up. And then King's Guard Camp F. This goes to four circles, so somewhere here. Okay. Do we put in uh, markers there? No, not yet. Does it say anything? Place in color three and four. Ah, oh, there we go. Three and four. 
Uh, place counter in front of the group on the table, create a token pool, flip the encounter tokens in the pool face down, and shuffle them. Place one encounter face down each of the newly revealed encounter spaces. Da, 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 da. General Grick and your other so called friends in the King's Guard came here to kill me, but they couldn't figure out how to get me out of this tree. Most of them are camped to their west. Something precious. West is I mean, probably an abandoned market, right? A few soldiers went to a scouting mission. I've got them playing a little game in the old market to the east. How is that west? It's west. Where is north then? Right. And if your entire party is, uh, is exhausted, mark the death tracker, which not, we can now rest. Uh, let's, re let's rest for 2 XP. Be a good rest. Seven. That's a, an okay rest. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? Then this just goes back to me. So we get seven as well as remaining. And then we can then move to another location. We can go to the banded market at the moment if we wanted to. Can we use the starfish here? D68. You let your starfish crawl around on the rubble that fell from the face of the frog king god. It seems to enjoy running its many tiny feet all over the god's eyes. Dylan's mouth on the floor speaks, this does not please me, he says. <laughs> well, that's it. We can uh uh do we go to the King's Guard? Let's go to the abandoned market first, right? We might be able to get more stuff there. So let's go to the abandoned market. For that we get this. It's encounter three. Let that go. We can go to six three zero. Uh, six three only, right? Six three. So here, if you have the title haunted, which we do, because of that one, the top. Go to six five. As you traverse, oh, why do we keep on bumping this? <laughs> that there. As you traverse the bump, as you traverse the bumps and dips of the giant mangrove truths, you are surprised to see Elsifor chatting casually with the ghost of Cathandor. Elsifor sees you and approaches shaking his head. Today is a lucky day for you. Cathandor is rightly upset about the loss of his horn. He wants to nail your tongue to the, to the shell of a snapping turtle and throw you into the swamp. But I've talked him into giving you a choice. You can have a trial by turtle, or you can make a blood offering to Urkan back the cobalt god of vengeance, begging his forgive forgiveness. So what do you think? Take the turtle test or do we just go a blood offering? Let's do the test. We have strength and constitution a lot. So we'll take that. Let's take a test. Six, 16, whatever kind of turtle test this is. <coughs> I'm sorry. 616. Elsifer snaps his fingers and finds your tongue nailed to the shell of a giant snapping turtle. You take a deep breath and hold it as Cathander pushes you over the edge of the root path in the murky swamp water. The turtle dives deep into the muck in an attempt to shake you. You'll have to pull yourself free, hopefully without ripping your tongue, before the beast drowns you. Still holding your breath, you brace yourself for the pain. <laughs> wow, it's like, ah! <laughs> Jesus, okay. So we go to endurance too. That's a weird turtle test. And we need more greens. Okay, so I think we can surrender two to get two greens. One, two. And then just the remaining five is random. Let's see what we get. Come on. One, two, three. 
four, five. We get a black there, which is good. And we get one red. See what we get. Can we endure this turtle bite? Come on, turtle bite. Okay, we get a three. Nothing. We get the five green. Can't do anything about that. We get a six. Red, nothing there. Could work with the one, probably. And the two, the three. We can flip that three. Okay. So we can change some colors here. So first, I think we can keep the other stuff. Uh, I don't want to do that first. We can flip a green if we wanted to. So this will be a two. So what's the other runic stuff that we have? So we can do it in one go. So we have these two runics. We can flip the black, which we do not want to. We can flip the purple. So four, yes. That's a black though. Sorry, that's a black. Hmm. No, we don't flip the purple, but we can uptick it. So we can use this. So we, we use the green, we use the runics uh, basically in one go. So we use this too. So by flipping the green into a two, you can go here. By flipping the this one into a four for future, you might convert that to red or black. If you want to, at least we have that in, ha in hand. And then, uh, can still we do? We can uptick the green. Do we have that here? Nope. We can use a spike shield. Let's use a spike shield to make this no go four. So that's our first one time use. So we have two cards now. And then Oh, we have there's a we have the other one, right? Let's change in three or four. We can change in a three or four to any color, which we can change this into a red. So that's done. There's three cards. So we just have these, this. We can change any color to red. That's another card. So that's one, two, one, two, three, four. So this is now a red. Just need to have a one green. We can need to do that green. Change any color to Erupta, and then change any color back to, yes. Okay, so we change this to a red, and we change it to a green with Relentless. So that's that's our all basic combo. So we get one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're still one away of our limit. And I think we just use, where's that? Where's our constant use one? Mm -hmm. If we have space. Clarity, we use our clarity. We add one stamina to our dice pool. So we can have always options, right? Let's put that there. And that's it. Our discard goes back to us. This was here. We get two XP. 
So thank you for resting. And then it all goes back. Oops. I think we passed that endurance test as we did. And it says here, endurance passes test. You pull free 640. So let's check 640. You free yourself from the giant snapping turtle shell and escape to the surface. Elsifor and, Ka and Kathandor both look impressed. You see them speak and Kathandor vanishes. Each player roll one die and add the number of stamina to your fatigue box from the supply equal to the result. So each player roll, uh, we remove the supply equal to the results. So we get that. We get a four, so four is gone. It's actually a good encounter. And then return the title haunted to the title deck. We are no longer haunted. Yes, please. And this is number 43. Oh. There we go. And then we are not exhausted and we can do a rest if we want to. I guess we just continue, right? Let's continue on to the abandoned market. And it's an E. What's that? E. Bump that. E, E, E. Okay. There is no XP, but the XP. In the center of an abandoned marketplace. Uh, where's that? Three kings guard soldiers battle each other. Four already lay dead nearby. A bottle of blue fluid rests on the ground in the middle of the fray. Alcifor appears beside you looking pleased. I poisoned them all, but provided only enough antidote for one, he says. Two were noble enough to take their own lives immediately. Two more died in battle. And now this, he nods to the remaining three, who point their swords at each other while clutching their own bellies in pain. Here's the secret, says the shadow. The poison only makes you sick if you do violence against an ally. Do nothing and you feel just fine. So here's your test. You can stay here with me and watch them die, or you can play the fool and try to reason with them. I guess we want to reason with them, right? That's what we want to do. Uh, is that strength and charisma? So go to E2. Sorry, there we go. Step into the fray and do your best to appeal to the wisdom of the remaining King's Guard soldiers. You explain the situation to them. A wicked shadow tricked them. The poison only hurts them because they hurt each other. And if they lay down arms, they will all survive and they look at you suspiciously. They're too dumb, calls Lossy for you. You're wasting your time. Now we need to do a persuasion of two. Yes, persuade me to lay down their swords. So now we get, what do we have? Um, purple and red. Can use two red and one purple, I guess. Two reds and one purple. And then we get four randomly. Four random one is one, two, three, four. Oh, cool. We get all the selections that we wanted. A shadow boon really is like giving it like one extra card each time really is useful. So we get a three immediately goes there. We get a five red goes there. And then I think this should be easy, right? So we can uptick the purple by one using this, a five. Oh, but it's a one-time use. I don't want to use the one-time use at the moment. Just a minute. Let me see if we have another one that changes, right? 
can we uptake a purple? Uptake a purple. Mm -hmm. I think that's the only one. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I have my desk. Yo, I have my purple black die. Use that as a weapon. And we uptake this into a five. Great. We can then uh, how do we make that to a six? Convert anything to red. Where's my convert anything to red? Oh wait, we can use the Jade Gauntlet. Any color to six. And then we just flip the red. Which is... Where is it? Show me, show me. There we go. We flip the red using diplomacy. So now it's a one. Lastly, flip the black. Where's my black flipper? Oh, I actually don't have one. Okay, we can't flip a black. Hmm. Uh, we can... Can we change anything with regards to the three and four? We can lower the white. If we flip the white, it'll be a four. Ah, there we go. Knew it. Found it somewhere. Flip the black to white, and then change that into a white using our. Where is it? The other one. There we go. Steadfast. This is now considered white. Whew. Persuade them, and we get two XP because of that. One, two. See what we get. They lay down their swords. E4. The soldiers lay down their swords and immediately begin to feel better. They thank you and one are back to their boat. We get a plus one, so that means this is now two. I think I knocked that up. It's sad, really, says Elsevier. Once they find out you've escaped from Kulbak, they will be back here to round you up or kill you. Your compassion is wasted on them, but you know what? We all have the room for growth. What you need to change in personality. Okay. We go to E12. It says here, else for vanishes and then appears. Uh, set up wrap. Else for a few gold, you can also be the owner of some fine new personality traits. You find several small ice lugs climbing up the side of Elsper's market spawn of an ice worm from another plane. He says, here you should have one. Elsper places one on your shoulder. Reveal discovery of card 66. Sorry. This is the one. Yeah. So we have the slug E66. 
Shuffle the trade deck. Okay, and then we can buy one. You can sleep if you want to, right? And we will be what two two off. It says here if if your dragon's favor is higher, you can uh, get a discount of two. We can buy the foolish to convert any to blue and white. Cost of four, which is what we have. I think that's what we want to do. Buy foolish. Their deck, especially as well as this. And this goes back. Trade deck. And we can sleep. Do we want to sleep? We have we can put this back because if we're going this way, right? There is a chance that there is a fight here. Oh sorry, why is this not an XP? I'm sorry, did I lost that again there? Okay. Um. Yes, I think we want to sleep. Let's do a quick rest of one. I think one is enough. It is enough. Get a four. It means we get one, two, three, four. That one, two. One, one. Hey, okay. just enough. Let's put the back on our deck. So we go to here. Should we check? It is encounter two. So we go to six two. If you had the keyword evade, go to six forty six. Six forty six here. Your journey across Bogwood brings you to a low deep deep. In the root path where you find yourself surrounded once again by construct guards from Kolbak. The ranks are tight and they entertain no conversation. We do get a swarm of dangerous constructs, so it's them again. Let's see, we try to find a construct. Which is colorful guys. And they have a swarm of dangerous. Says here, the swarm is during the first round of this combat. The combat dice limit is reduced by three. So we have an eight, which is now five for this round. And for five, I think we want one white, one blue, and one black in already immediately, right? So we get. One white, one black, and one blue. And then let's put a marker in. So I guess we get the other two as randomly. If we're fully rested, I think we're, we are fine at this point. And it's two more blacks. Okay. See if we can knock them out. Okay, what do we get? One, four, two, five. So I guess we can flip the two to a five. All right, we can flip the two using this to a five. Uh, Can we do, can we do? Can use knowledge. Okay, no, actually. Can we flip the white to a three? Using knowledge, the second card, and then just deduct it. 
with my white using my spell book two okay so that's three cards we have four more um i think we can use our block black 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 can use our jewel dagger put it spent file to make this into a five And then we can use the the other weapon. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? The uh, useful one that only goes up. Yeah. Use the unholy flail to increase this into two, and we just convert that. So one, two, three, four, five. Change that color into. Change anything into red using steadfast. So this is now a red. And lastly is change any color into blue at that one. Use foolish. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just enough for the play limit. So that's now considered blue. And that's that. So we get two gold plus one XP, uh, two XP. And Pontrock is now considered dead. Remove the two, I think. Sorry, sorry, let me double check. Yeah, 647. By now you're familiar with all the constructs maneuvers, so you defeat you defeat them with ease. You pause to enjoy this moment of ease and freedom, knowing that this will be this will not be the last of Colbeck's efforts to recapture you. Return this encounter to the game box, which we did. We can rest. Uh, I don't think so. We're good, and then just move on to the next location, which is we're going to see. Just the ancient observatory. So we collect the XP. The roots of the mangrove used to extend to this island, but they have been sawed off several feet from the shore. Their stumps painted with the eye of the starlit door. Within the observatory, you find that the dome ceiling and walls are still painted with the mural of the heavens, marking each constellation. The great lenses once used by the ancients to observe celestial movements have fallen and cracked. Statues of frog, frogkin villagers pose in the states of surprise among the chunks of broken glass. It's like, ah. As you marvel at the artwork of the ancients, you hear the sound of an animal sniffing around in the dark corner of the observatory. Something has detected your presence. We, do we just charge the sound or we hide? I think we do hide because we're still good with our shadow boon, right? So we use our dexterity and constitution. C3. Sorry, where's my marker? It says, you hold still and attempt to hide yourself from a pair of red eyes searching the dark. It's a skill check of concealment. Okay, so we have to hide. We should be good at since we're a vampire spawn. And it's a level two concealment. So two black, one green, two whites. Can use one black and one green, I think. Let's add that to the mix. One black and one green. And then four more random ones. One, two, three. Four. Okay, we don't have a white. So we have purple and the that's okay. Okay, we have the three black here. Good. Uh, and so far, that looks like it is it. This is a five. We can flip that if we wanted to. Oh, it's a purple. So this is actually good. It's already there. Now, 
need to flip the four. Okay, so we need a black four. Sorry, where am I getting that? We need a black four, two green, and two white. Okay. You can change the four into any color using this, maybe. So we just change that into a black. Then, how do we make a two? We can uptick the blue to two. Right, and then just change the blue into a white. Yes, okay, we got a friendly frogkin. Change the blue to into a white. Okay, that we can do another one for purple. Wow, you were using much. Right now, at the moment. Where is our purple uptick? We can uptick the purple once to two, and I think we can just change that into a green if we want to, right? So we change it to red first, and then we change it into green. Let's add most of it. So this is now a green. So we get two XP because of that. We used to, we spent two. That's okay. Then we hide that. Done, we were able to hide from whatever that is. And it says, you, you are silent and unseen. We go to CV6. You hide behind the ruined frame of the observing lens and wait in silence. Watching the eyes, you see them search the observatory, find nothing, and then lower themselves to the floor and close. Soon you hear the deep breathing of a sleeping creature. Feeling your way forward, you discover the long body of a basilisk, basilisk coiled near one of its eggs. You've heard basilisk eggs can fetch a good price from the right buyer. It is slimy and smells awful, but you tuck into your, body ba into your bag and move your wake a sleeping creature who startled and scurries off, seeking a safer place to build her nest. Reveal discovery card 97, which is this basilisk egg. It's, it's currently free to use. You discover an indentation in the wall that is shaped like a five-pointed star. Mm, we can use our thing there. And set in the crown of the constellation Marin and dragon goddess of the sea. If you're started, Favor is three or higher, which it is. You may study the mural of the heavens more closely. Sure. Let's, let's, let's. Do we want to rest first? Sorry, I think I rested uh, twice now already. And I keep on forgetting to do this. We can rest again if you want to. Uh, Do we want to rest again? I think so. No, we're like what? Nine? We're nine, so it's okay. We only just use three of these things. I think we're okay. So we just go through, we go to C8. If you have the keyword sky, which we don't. Since your youth, you've known that each star in the sky is a window into another world. If there were a giant tall enough to reach the heavens, it, it could peer into every realm of the planar verse. Azima, the benevolent, framed those windows, arranging them in, in constellations that represent the pantheon of dragon gods, in whose image she forged Ulos and in whose name she brought order to the planar verse. Looking at this mural of the heavens, you feel drawn skyward. Somewhere deep within you knows that the gate of Breezer Wall will soon open. 
Azima will return and Ulos will, will be rejoined with all the worlds behind those stars. You feel inspired, connected. You feel inspired and connected. The stars of the mural begin to glow, reflecting the radiance you feel emanating from within you. Choose a player, which is us. Increase your charisma attribute score by one and one stamina to your charisma attribute row from the supply. Ooh, thank you. So thank you for being inspired. And now three, and we get to one here. Record the keyword sky, means we can do this only once. And then we just rest or use an item or move on to the other location. Uh, can we use, uh, let's use our five pointed star C68. Where is it? 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 C68. You try to press a starfish into the indentation in the wall. It's the perfect size, but it wriggles its arms and won't stay still long enough to fill the space. Uh huh. Maybe we use the ice lug on the starfish. It's like to make to make because it's an ice lug, right? It's like to make it frozen. So we use one. C sixty six sixty eight. C sixty six sixty eight. You let you let your starfish and ice lug explore the ancient observatory together. They find a play, private corner and have a little chat. Oh, stupid. <laughs> Okay, uh, can we do anything with the basilisk egg? C97. You inspect the basilisk egg closely. It really does smell hard. Want to taste? So we can choose one. Do you want to lick the egg? <laughs> basilisk, it's basilisk, right? You will get frozen or something? Let's see. C7, sure, why not? We are experimental. You lit the basilisk egg and are overwhelmed with a wave of nausea. You have to lie down on the floor for quite some time before it passes. Yeah, the egg is gross. <laughs> Choose it there, add three stamina to your fatigue box from the supply. Okay, yeah, that's bad. <laughs> One, two, three. So we're now at 13. Not yet? Okay. Do we want to rest now? That's the question. I think we might need to. Before we go into that uh, fight. There might be a fight there. So we're resting for two. And it's eight. We're removing eight. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Thank you. We put one in our marker. So one more, and we will have to remove some cards. It'll be the first time we will actually do that. Okay. So I guess we're going this way. And let's open this up. It's four. Uh, so go to four, four, six, four, six, four. We have the title Troll Slayer, which we do not, or both the titles Rogs, Accomplice, and Troll Foe, since both, right? Uh, we only have, we don't even have those both. Okay. Else, the heat of a bog root swamp is so punishing that you climb off the root path and down to the water to cool off. You find a muddy embankment where strange clothes lie scattered about. They are thickly made like winter garb for mountain dwellers, but made of fabric unfamiliar to you. Following the trail of this strange discarded clothing, you find an orange-skinned creature stripped nearly bare with several roaming eye stalks. Lying on the muddy ground, gasping for breath. The creature speaks gibberish to you at first. Then it produces a mechanical box from its be belt, which speaks too hot, says the box. Must go home. If you have item 66 next to the party journal, we do. We go to 613. Right, item 66. 
go to 613. The ice slug you found climbing the side of S4 personal shop might help cool things be this might help cool things before overheated creature down. As you reach for the slug, you wonder if this stranger might be dangerous. You notice its equipment lying nearby, open but unattended. Perhaps something in its pack might give you an idea of where it came from and what it needs. Um, yeah, let's try to cool him down. It's, it's okay, I think. 633. We are the always helpful one. You press the ice slug to the creature's forehead and it smiles briefly. He speaks gibberish for a moment again and then his machine translates. Thank you, says, but not enough. You tuck the slug away and a look of resignation comes over the creature's many face, many eyed face. Its eye stalks turn to look out over the swamp water. What is this strange, unstable ground? It asks. You get the sense that the creature has never seen water before. Ah, look at that. It has a drawing. I'll show you. Let me see if I can lift this for a moment. Perhaps that's why it didn't dive into the cool itself down. So we help it into the water, which just goes to 635, so on the side. You roll the strange creature over a few times toward the water line. Once in the water, the creature seems to much happier, in fact. It looks right at home. It speaks, but you don't understand. Its box translates, so strange, it's almost like flying. The creature's many limbs seems to make it a normal swimmer. It dives and spins, it races and twirls, it lazily paddles along the surface. And all the while, it makes odd hoots of joy. After it, in this rev reverie, it paddles your way to thank you. You have saved me, translates its box. I thank you. Then it grabs its pack and swims off into the swamp. Reveal title card 51. Fifty one. And it is a Ice World Ambassador. After funding finding a strange exhausted traveler in the swamp, he led into water and swam away happily. Somewhere in the waters of Ulo swims an otherworldly fish who owes you a favor. Hey. I'll take that favor anytime. Uh, so where were we? Here, we then rest or we just move on to the next location. We just move on, right? No need to rest. We go to the F. The F. Which is the King's Guards camp. So we get the XP. The Kingsguard camp is an eerie sight. The Orcus General Greg and his soldiers stand, staring skyward, all fixed in place. The form of a gigantic worm made of its ice towers over Greg and his soldiers. It too is frozen in place. An unattended cooking fire still crackles in the center of the camp. If any player has the Eye of Ulos artifact card, do we have it? I don't think so. Eye of Ulus. You only have Catander Horn, as far as I remember. Nope, we don't have it. Otherwise, F3. LC4 explains the scene to you. When your cloaked countrymen bowed me to this awful tree, they exposed the trinket and opened a rift to the frosty plain of Ictel. This friendly creature fell right through and attacked an otherwise boring collection of soldiers. I thought it would be best to hold them in place until you got here. Elsevier floats across the camp to a sword with a red metal hilt lodged firmly into a root swamp. Recognize it? Elsevier asks. This is the sword of the immortal knight, a sacred treasure to Nalos and a fine blade as well. The shadow snaps his fingers. Instantly, the whole camp comes to life and scrambles to, to defend themselves as the ice worm opens its face, revealing a cavernous maw full of shagged fangs. Elsevier floats over to you and watches you with interest. What will you do? Uh, do we help General Grick? 
Or do we just get the sword? Do we get the sword or General Grek? Um, sword seems mightily... It's fine. Let's help the troops. Help the troops fight off the Ice Worm. F5. You charge the defense of the King's Guard. That's the four shrugs. Oh well, he says. Good luck, I suppose. As you head into the battle, another member of the King's Guard takes up the ancient blade and charges toward the beast. He is immediately lifted up by its icy jaws and tr thrown deep into the swamp. Okay, and then we are fighting the icy firm, which is number 29. Stupid. Why did he get the sword? I was thrown into the swamp. Should have gotten it. Ooh, it's nice. So we have an ice worm. So we need the blue, white, purple, or black, and red. Uh, I think we get, we need to put one blue, one white, and just one red. One blue, one white, one red. And we get five more dice. So right now we have one, two, three, four, five. We get reds, purples, and black. Okay, that's okay. That's most of what we need, right? A marker. Do you think I did it? Come on, Ivory. Okay. They're blacks. More whites. Reds are here. And a purple. Okay, nothing matches immediately, which is not good. Which means we have to use all our stuff here. So. I think it says here that we can change any color into six. We use that one. Make this a six. It's our first one, first card. And then I think we need to use our Ulos thing. Uh, runic. Let me get all our runics. Let's see if we can use something here in one go. Runic. Runic. Okay, so we can reroll a purple or we can uptick it one by one. We can reroll a green, which we don't have, so we can put that away. And we reroll a black. So we can reroll both. Or we just use the runic signet. Okay, I think what this is what this is what we can do. We can reroll the runic signet. So it, it is a black two, it can go there, right? And then we can reroll this using our runic alm amulet. So we're doing it in one go. That's still seven four. That's two cards in. Uh, Mm-hmm. What else can we do? I think we use the uptick for the white for the spell book. Make this a five. Okay. What else? Did we do anything with the two? 
the three cards now used. If we uptick the black by one and then change it to a blue, we can do that, right? Oh, this might be better. We can use resolute to make three into a I already used my uptick for one. We have another uptick for blue here, I think. That's for black. Change three or four to a blue and then uh I think that's what we need to do. Change the okay. Let's change the tree. Change the tree into blue. This is now considered blue, and then we just lower it by one. Make it a two. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So two more. Two more. There's no, we only have one uptick for white. Can we take it that again? I spent two stamina for your wisdom, return this to your hand. Okay, no, can't do that. So if we change it to green, then we change it back to white. First, we change it to green. How do we change it to a green? Uh, we can change it to green using honorable. Oh, and change anything to from green. So it's from green. I think we have to use with a six, right? So let's do that. So flip the black first. We can flip the black. Oh, just do this. Use examine. One changes to five. Change that into white. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's our play limit of five. And that's our that's what we can do. So that's our first round. Uh, we we get damaged by two fatigue. One, two. And then two XP is removed from us. And in return, we get two XP back. So it doesn't really matter. And then we do our turn again. Um, we just get eight dice. I think we should be able to get some sticks here. We don't need to convert anything. So we just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Okay. And we just reroll this. Give me a six. There we go. A six. And we will use our
steadfast, we'll change this into a red. So we get one more XP because of that. And we have cleared the ice worm. Okay, it says here, you slay the beast and must face the king's guard. Let's see first, we go to efforts. Okay, we don't need to do at this speed. Can just return all of this back. Back. Go to 29 for you. As you slay the ice worm, ice worm and the remaining members of the King's Guard gather around you, General Grick steps forward with his axe shouldered. You can tell that he and his soldiers recognize you from your meeting near Black Lake. And you get a sinking feeling in the pit of your stomach. The news of your trial and escape from Kulbeck has reached bog route you are about to be caught. But General Grick gives you a hard punch to the chest, the traditional orc expression of gratitude. You have done well, he says. My compliments to Zalik for sending you to us. Perhaps you will have a better luck in this rotten swamp than we have. Grick explains that he and his soldiers must move north into the abandoned lands. He orders you to remain and chase Alcifor out of bog route. Greg's opinion will likely change once he learns of your alleged crime. But he, for now, as he leaves with the soldiers, you've escaped justice and retain his trust. Reveal title card 52. Ooh, okay. We are Greg's soldier. You help Greg, General Greg and his soldiers right, fight off an ice firm, thus earning his favor. At the time, Greg did not know that you were fugitives from Kulbak and were wanted for the death of your king. Continue to F10. You know you are now alone in this small island. From the roots of the giant mangrove, the cooking fire still smolders, coals glows brightly. So if your entire party is exhausted, we are not exhausted. So we'll have to use a combination of all of our slugs and basilisk eggs, right? Maybe we use the basilisk egg and the so 6897, right? So that if we break the egg into the, um, how to say this, into the starfish so it hardens itself because it's a basilisk. So, first, I think we do a quick rest of two. And it is a nine. Take that. So this is now four. So next rest, we will have to remove a card. So nine. So almost everything is removed. OK, uh, maybe we try the ice slug first. No, so the basis egg here, something, 97, F97. Where is 97? You place the basis egg in the hot coals and the slimy coating around it begins to dry and flake away, revealing a lovely light blue shell underneath. Oops. That's not good. Uh, return discovery card 97. It's quite bad, we just lost it. And... Discover 83, so I don't know why we cooked that. <laughs> Back, and then we get 83. Hopefully it's something good. And it is a baked, <laughs> a baked basilic egg. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> so now, maybe we go back to the ancient observatory. Right? That's the only thing I can think of. We go to back to ancient observatory. We go to C, because that's the only one where we have to use the thing. So we use it with a so 6883. It's free. So we just need to check it. 
6883. You set your starfish on the floor and roll the big basilisk egg to it. The, tar the starfish is no good at this game. Oh my god. Okay. Um. Let's go back to the mangrove. Maybe we're gonna find something there. Go to B. We go to B. Where's that? B, 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 B. Uh, we go to B1. Elsa floats lively around the base of the mango. Well, have you finally come to free me from the wretched tree? Can we use the basilisk egg here? B83. You place the clean baked basic egg at the root of the giant mangrove. It looks really nice. You really like this egg. What a great egg. <laughs> Let's go back to the temple. Maybe you find something there. Uh, D1. Okay, so we can just use any item right now. Uh, let's use D6. D83 for the moment. The baked basic egg is much nicer than before you baked it. Like, much nicer. And you're sure the fucking god feels the same way. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. That there isn't, isn't much we can do here. Let's go to the abandoned market. Maybe we find something there. Let's go to E. Ba -ba -ba -ba. E1. So we can buy more from stuff from LC4. We don't have any money. We have two gold, right? So we can. Choose the E68. Oh, sorry, not E68. E83, where is it? E83. And that's it. It's the only thing we can do there. Hmm. Let's go back to the Sandhill village. So we have to encounter this. What is this? It's counter one. Six one. In this impressive heat, the work of a climbing up and down the mangrove roots is hard work. You pause to swat the bugs, the bugs gathering the bite of the back of your neck, and spy a rat folk woman eyeing you nervously from the top of the race in the root path. The woman holds a small knife and wide a metal ball. She points her blade in your direction and instructs you not to approach her. I don't want any trouble, she says. Tell me, so I know what you stand for. Are you a fiend? Are you a friend to the frogkin or in the shadow or to the shadow that torments them? I think I'm a friend of the frogkin, right? So we go to six seven. The rat folk woman face sours when you announce your allegiance to the frogkin. You hear sounds of claws crumbling up the sides of the roof path from below you, and soon you are surrounded by rat folk, all brandishing knives. Our quarrel is not with you, says the woman, holding the metal bowl. The frogkin stole this from our people hundreds of years ago, and they are getting their just punishment now. We do not know you and hold no grudge against you. Sure. We apologize and make peace. I don't want to make any trouble. The rat folk woman sets her bowl down and fills it with swamp water. All the other rat folk sits around her with their eyes closed. The rat folk woman invites you to join them and then rings the bowl like a bell with a stick. It vibrates, making a hauntingly beautiful sound that modulates with the motion of the rippling water. So we have to do a skill check. 
of introspection. And level two. So we need a blue, green, and white and red. So we can uh, get seven. Let's get one blue. So it's out of the way. And maybe one green. Right, maybe one green. And then the other five is random. One, two, three, four, five. Hey, it's a collection of what we need. A little bit. Okay. Okay. So we get a two white. One down. We get one green. Right. And then the rest we have to do something. Uh hmm. can we do? I think we just want to change this to a blue. Change any color to blue. So this is now a blue. Right? And then we want to lower the blue by one. Oh, we need lower the blue. Uh, lower the blue, lower the blue, lower the blue, lower the blue. That's the one I want to use, not this one. Ah, where is it? Yes. We'll use this to lower the blue by one. So it's now five. And then we'll flip it using knowledge, make it into a two. Lastly is the up tip the block, the black. We uptick the black by one. Where is it? Where's my purple thing? My mace, where's my mace? There you go, we use our purple mace, make it by one. So this is now a three black, and then we're changing it into a red. And lastly is the other combination is red into green. Relentless. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's enough. All good. We get two XP because of that. We are going along. Let me take this away. What's that? Is that there? Oh, that's there. Okay, 6.49. A sense of great peace flows through your, you and the tone of the bull hums quietly for several moments. You wish it would never end. When it finally fades completely, you notice the buzz of insects has ceased. It's as if all the nature was listening to the sound. The swamp water in the bowl, once murky and foul, is now a crystal clear and sweet smelling. All take a sip from it and are refreshed. Each player roll two dice and return two stamina. Oh, wow. So everything goes back. Thank you. 
and we add another bonus play as indicated. And then that's it. We can now move on to the other location. Let's go to A. Let's see what we can find something here. Uh, there is no XP. Go to A1. Uh, let's use our 66, maybe. Mugbook inspects your ice log with some interest. I've never seen anything like this, but I think I have an idea. Okay, A96. Mugbook hopster hut. You hear the grind of mortar and pestle from within. Mugbook returns some time later. Not my best work, she says, but it should do the trick. Return discovery card 66. Okay. And reveal discovery card 70. What did she do? Did, did she just ground? the uh the thing the ice freezing elixir there you go that's what we want freezing elixir is 170. okay now we're doing something and then i guess we just go through c we want to go to c Uh, C, 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 C. Okay, so on C, we can mix the 70 and 68. So we use one stamina again. C, 68, 70. C, 68, 70. You pour your freezing elixir over the starfish and it stiffens into a rigid five pointed star, which fits perfectly into the indentation in the wall. You to C35. You hear a click and then a grinding of gears. A door opens in the wall before you before you and leads into an ancient Dergolium chamber. The earth shakes, the air crackles with green energy, and you catch a whiff of summer breeze blowing through the tall prairie grass. Before you, a leather sack rests on a pillar. Inside the sack, you find a set of oversized knuckle bones. Carved with runes, an ancient tool for, for divination. The bones hum quietly and glow when you touch them. You quickly tuck them into a Dergolium chainmail sack. Earth and air are still again. The smell of warm grass lingers. Return discovery card 68 and 70. Okay, so they're done. And uh, reveal rare card 44. Sixty-eight and seventy. Build very hard. Forty-four. What is this? Maybe this is the one we need to use to kill the. It's a rune bones. Oh, okay, it's a card. I'll take that free stuff. What the heck? And that's it? Uh, how do we kill the other one? Uh, we use B83 here, I think. B83. That's it. Did I miss something? So we went here, we went here. I think we have to go back again to Sand Hill, right? Because that's the only one we haven't used the egg. We use the egg here, we use the egg here and here and here. So let's go back, A, A1, mug book. We use the egg, A83. Uh, you show Mugbook the baked basilic egg, all clean and pretty. Oh, yes, she says, with uncharacteristic enthusiasm. That will do nicely. Okay, continue to A2. Mugbook hops quickly into her hut with the baked basilic egg and returns a moment later with a blue potion. A potion of purification, she says. This is just what we needed. Pour this at the base of the mangrove, she hands it to you and wishes you luck. 
may burglap be with you. Oh, finally, that's the one we want. Return discovery card 83 to the discovery deck. Okay. And reveal discovery card 73. Purification. Is it one time use? Oh, ocean of purification. Okay, so final encounter, it seems, right? So we go to B. Or do we go to E? Now we have to verify the mangrove itself, right? Okay, fine. We, we pour it to B73. Where's B73? B73. You pour the potion of purification over the roots of the giant mangrove. The fluid sinks in and the roots start steaming. B21. The earth shakes and the water across the old bogwood ripples and Elsipar sign leaps from the trunk of the mangrove, swelling to twice his normal size. You've done it, cries Elsipar. Aren't you clever? Now let's see how you did with my little tests. Record the keyword purged. Oh, if we ever did like, uh, I think, followed him or something. Return discovery card 73 to the deck. If you have two or more with the following keywords, look deep and within B12, otherwise B16. Where is B16? I'm afraid. Elsifor Sheikh said, it's sad really, he says. I had no I had hope you would amount to something, but you're no better than the rest. Elsifor towers over you as his smoke grows dense and menacing. His claws extend like daggers and he lunges for your chest. Elsifor, number eleven. Yeah. You're a demon. What what can I do? Yikes. He's menacing. Okay, combat. So we have to attack him first, right? It doesn't say in like regards to like level one or something. Okay, do we just do randomly? I think we do because it's all over the place, right? So we get um one, two, three. Four, five, six. Give me something white, man. And then, oh my god, it's all greens and reds. That's bad for us, I think. <laughs> okay, all the reds go here, here, and here, and they're all the same as well. Oh my god. D11. Nothing, nothing matches it. That's oh, okay. So I guess oh, we get a five. Okay, it's good. We get a five. With the blue, we can get a six, right? I think we'll use realign and we get two blacks. Let's roll it. Five and three. One there. 
let's let's put our thing here. This is the one I've used, so I remember, right? And then we use the black thick up down. Where is it? Where is it? Come on, show me. There's one using the dagger. Make this a four. You can change anything to six. Make it this is six. Oh wait, no, 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 no. We have a flipper red, right? We have a flipper red. Better to use that. Where is that? Diplomacy. We're flipping a red. This one to a six. Okay, we're reading our way through it. So we have what? How many use three so far? Uh, what can we do? The blue. Let's go to a four. Uptick the green by one. Then convert it. Right, I think so. Um, you can change any red into white. So that's one, two, three, four. You can do another one, right? Yes, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so we change this into a white and then uptick it by one, looking at the six. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. We have one more. Please cover one of these, right? Uh, You can change the blue to a purple, right? Okay. And it only do. Okay. So we can use this to a blue, change it to a blue using our foolish, and then flipping it using our knowledge. So it'll be six. I think that's it. Because that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's actually eight. It means you use one of our bonus plays. So I put this in the spent file, this card file, and we damage two XP to us and three fatigue. And we try to roll another fight. Round two. Uh, let's get one purple just in case. So sure that we get one purple at least. Then we just get seven more. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Okay. Just need a two it's from the three dice that we have. Come on. Okay, we got a flipper. Very good. Oh, we got a two. There we go. And that's done. It's our reward. Reward is one gold. One, two, three, four, five, five XP. That's a lot. One, two, three, four, five. Thank you, Calcifer. Calcifer. <laughs> hey, that's our new that's your new name.
Uh, so we go to B19. Else4 is startled by his own defeat. I really am impressed, he says. I can't wait to see what you do next. With that, he vanishes in a wisp of black smoke. Uh, we reduce our Dragle's favor by one. Uh, increase it by one. And this is by one. Reveal title card 50. Says Elsifor's Banisher. In Bogroot Swamp, you struck down the, the demon Elsifor. Elsifor does not seem to hold grudges. He's not likely to do you any favors if you meet again. Your quest is complete from now on when the choice is good. It gives you the opportunity. Okay, let's. Do we still have anything to do? I don't think so, right? Maybe we go. Let's just go to each uh, card. Let's go to A. Maybe it does tell us something. Nope. Let's go to B. Uh, nope. Let's go to C. No, it doesn't say anything. Let's go to D. Nope. It's because it's regarding our new uh, banisher status, right? E. If we are in E13, means we go to... In the center of the abandoned marketplace, the bodies of seven King's Guard soldiers lay dead in a near perfect circle around a broken bottle. Several ice slugs crawl around, leaving little trails of frost behind them. Hey. As for Spanisher E13. Reveal this card of card 66. The same it's the same thing. So that means if we killed him earlier, right? And then that's it. F is the last one. That's it. Okay, so let's go to the end. Uh, the end. You heard northeast from you head northeast from Bogwood Swamp, following the closest stone spine ridge, which keeps you mostly out of sight. Even so, you sense that the hounds of Kulback are still on your trail, unless you can find some. Uh, sorry, unless you can find some place to hide, it's only a matter of time before they drag you back to the prison again. After many days of travel, you must leave the shelter of Stone Spine Ridge and walk through open farmland. Every small town you pass through is plastered with wanted posters bearing your name and description. You take to walking at night and hiding during the day. As you travel, you reflect on your time in Bog Root. Uh, what do we have? We have Elsifor's Banisher. You freed Elsifor from the giant mangrove and bested him in battle. Freeing the frog and villagers from Elsifor's test, now that the shadow is loose in the world, perhaps he'll think twice about challenging you if you ever meet again. And we do find a Ice World Ambassador. Okay. Oh, sorry, Triumph of the Faithful. You're sure... The faithful frogkin woman would be glad to have Bogrut free of Elsifer. She seemed intent on saving her priest, even though she was clearly corrupted by Elsifer. You wonder if frogkin healing rituals are powerful enough to drive off a demon spell, or if a priest who failed demon's test could ever be trusted again. Then somewhere in Ulos, the swims a strange creature from another world that you helped to water. Imagine living on the plain of ice, never having seen liquid, and then swimming with such natural skill. You wonder where the many-eyed being will swim next, or if it will ever find its way home. And Greek soldier, finally. General's Greek's trust will not last. News of your supposed crime will have breached him by now, and you can only imagine his rage. Greek is the type who would rather have you cut his face down than lie to it. You pray your paths never cross again, or you can clear your name before you see him again. And that's it. Conclusion. In time, you arrive at the outskirts of Falandor, a small city that borders the Forgotten Forest. Rumor has it that the woods beyond Falandor are fully full of unruly spirits who guard the long coast. Castle Carleval, a great wonder built thousands of years ago with satyr magic. If you can find it, you can rest until the, the Hound of Gangs and Bounty Hunters give up their search. 
with Kobach's agents at your heels, you press onward through the streets of Falendor. So we're just trying to find. And it says here, how are we to explore the plains of the Zemus Gate is closed? And all, but one of the articles has been seized from Gulpax Colossus. Some wonders where Posey the Night Sky could serve as portals, allowing us to join the Elsewhere by passing through stars. I think that's what he did, right? So that's it. That's our adventure six. We were able to clear the swamp, which is what we wanted. And then uh, basically just do all those things. Uh, we got a couple of new uh, um, titles for us. And then most of everything is that. So we have three gold, which I don't think we can buy anything in that amount. We have five, 10, 15. We have 18 XP that we can use. Uh, we can increase our play limit again to eight. Uh, we can even increase most of our stuff, right? So I think we just increase our dice limit because from this size, I think most of the dice is like nine. So we can increase it by two. We go to 10. It doesn't say there is a limit for combat dice. So we go to 10. It's now gone. Okay, and then uh, do we want to increase our play limit? Um, we can increase our wisdom, I think, by one. So we pay three. So wisdom is now three. But at least we can use those uh, return to hand, right? Needed. And then. Do we use the five? Do we use the five for the play limit? Did we ever reach it? We reach it once, I think, but let's let's be safe and make that eight. So we did this, right? So this is all gone. That's it. So so far everything is going well. Uh, I think uh, I think that what they're trying to say with regards to like uh, the the how easy it is, right? It goes hand in hand. Yeah. Once you like get like a mass of cards, look at how many of our deck is. How thick is that? So maybe once we try to finish this, we can try the the legendary mode that they proposed, and then see how that goes. Because with that one, is you get to do a little bit of deck building in in that. Yeah. Because it says like you can only bring a certain soft or something, right? So maybe that's worth a try, but maybe this gets difficult a little bit more. So yeah, uh, thank you for joining. Uh, we will continue to seven. What is actually seven? Let's see, seven. Where do we go from seven? Adventure 7. We also have a side quest that we can try. But then I think we try to do that a little bit at the end. What is Adventure Book 7? Oof. Oh, okay, there we go. Adventure Book 7 is Ghost Eaters of the Forgotten Forest. Look at that. That's actually nice. Hey, brother. Is it the brother of James Ryan? So it looks like he finished his story stint and will continue on. So that's it. Thank you for joining. Uh, see you next time.